Welcome to Eurodal University with Jeff Snyder. My name is Emil Kalinowski, and today we're going to be talking about inventory accumulation. The retail and wholesale level, that's something that we've been talking about for quite a bit of time now. Jeff, when was it that you first raised this topic? I believe it was in the autumn of last year, and you were warning us, yeah, demand is doing well right now at that time and is keeping pace with this incredible acceleration in inventory. But we're concerned based on what we've seen over the last 15 years that should demand taper off, inventory won't, and then that'll lead to a self-reinforcing negative inventory liquidation cycle on the wholesale retailer level, and it'll be bad news for the economy. Is that right? Is that the scene? Yeah, and I think, Emil, if we go back and really look up uh, what happened, you and I did our show on the inventory cycle and how this was mm -hmm. a special inventory cycle. I believe that was September of 2021, which means our timing was impeccable for maybe the first time ever. And a short run basis, we have such horrible timing. Remember, we just did a stable coin uh, podcast yes. not long ago. It was two days before the Luna Terra blow up. So our timing in a short run basis is usually the exact opposite. It's but I the would kiss say, of death. Yes. We should I, be sponsored by people <laughs> who don't want us to mention them. Yeah. But in this case, I think we got it exactly right. I believe if you go look at the exact episode number and the timing, it was September of 2021. And then the month after that, October of 2021, was mm. when the inventory flood just absolutely got unleashed. And it hasn't really stopped to this point, or at least up until the latest data, which I believe is for the month of April of 2022. So what we said was, in light of the supply shock last year, and the supply shock last year was inelasticity in global supply of goods, which meant a couple different things. It meant suppliers, yes, there were shortages of components. But by and large, it was difficult to move goods from producers to intermediaries and then to the end user, particularly the port snafus, all sorts of railroad troubles inside the United States, warehousing issues, lack of truck. Well, there's not there was more than enough trucks. They just didn't want to go to go wait at a port. Anyway, any number of logistical issues that made it difficult for goods to get to these massively hungry American consumers who were stuck in their houses and buying everything off of Amazon for the first time ever. And what that meant was a lot of retailers seeing dollar signs in their eyes, profit opportunities said, screw it, man. I'm just going to order anything and everything just to try to shove as much stuff as I can through this mess and hope a little bit of goods come out from the other side so that I can take advantage of this tremendous opportunities that American consumers are giving me. And yeah, I'm going to double, triple, quadruple, quintuple order. And, I, and as that stuff gets delivered, that's next year's problem. I'll take care of it when it happens. I don't care because I just want to make sure that I take advantage of this opportunity. That's really what we were saying in September was that this double, triple, quintuple, who knows how much over ordering was out there. We were saying, you know, if it ever does come to home, come home to roost, it could potentially be a problem. And then October of 2021, that trickle of inventory or that trickle of goods into the U.S. suddenly became a flood. Yes, we could have said if it ever comes to pass that retail sales and personal income slow down. But I don't think we were in that boat, right, Jeff? We were saying it's probable things are going to turn against this inventory surge because we're in year 15 of a silent depression. We've seen this story before. And as you have timed it, it was the early summer, late spring of 2021 when we saw the recovery, such as it was, the reflation start to inflect. And so by October, by September, surely our base case was that, yeah, this is going to turn against these retailers and wholesalers. And even at that time, it wasn't as if um, consumer spending and retail sales needed to contract in order to create a problem. They just needed to not grow, right? At that time already, retail sales had kind of plateaued. Consumer spending had kind of plateaued from its you know, post-helicopter highs. And what we said was, if you draw these lines, inventory going this way, consumer spending just going sideways, eventually inventory was going to catch up and surpass spending, and that would be a problem. Of course, all the retailers said, no, 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 we've got this covered. I remember it was Costco and I think uh, Home Depot. And some of the others said, yeah, we're over ordering, but that's okay. 
We know how to handle. We're going to manage our individual supply chain so that there's going to be no problem whatsoever. And of course, the logistical problems Strange. continued all throughout the autumn and into the winter. So that I think in the minds of most of these retailers that justified their continuing to overorder all the way into this year, which now we're seeing questionable retail results, questionable consumer, uh, consumer behavior. At the same time, the inventory numbers are just biblical. We're going to look at those biblical numbers. I wonder why these retailers are behaving this way, Jeff. It must be they have economists on staff, <laughs> economists you, you with know it. <laughs> great credentials. And those credentials, of course, are just parroting what the Federal Reserve says, what the Citadel of Economics says, and, and they can't think independently. And I, I, so well, I'm just remember, bewildered you know, that- You're right. Oh, these, they hire econ I mean, these big companies have economists on staff. They tell them, hey, this is what you should forecast as far as consumer demand. And remember what they're using to create these forecasts right. for consumer demand. They're mainstream neo-Keynesian econometric models that all say yeah. that anything the Fed does, anything mm -hmm. the federal government does that is stimulus is going to have a multiplier greater than one. So if the gov federal government does this massive intervention in the real economy in March and April of 2021, that's only going to propel things forever forward into the sky because that's how econometric models are, are set up to view what governments do, what the Federal Reserve does. So I'm sure they were forecasting no slowdown in demand whatsoever. At the same time, you have these logistical problems. So, you know, these, these ordering departments at these big retailers all said, keep it up, keep up, keep everything flowing because we need to get as much goods as we can because. Let's get it while the getting's good because consumers are really, really in the mood to spend. A moment ago, you said that the inventory surge was biblical. And while we don't have a chart that goes back several thousand years, we do have one that goes pretty far back, 30 years. Retail, sales, and inventory seasonally adjusted, excluding motor vehicles and parts. And Jeff, we can see the month over month change and the most recent numbers just for the audience to see biblical in terms of this 30 year run, there's been nothing, nothing anywhere near the sort of month over month increases that we've been ringing in month after month for all of 2022, essentially. And the funny thing but is, there have been some revisions. Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say some of these months, the numbers come in that are ridiculously high, and then they get revised higher. And it's like, wait yes, a we, we thought we had a lot of inventory, now we have a lot more. Our audience is going to say, yeah, because of consumer price increases, Jeff. So the nominal value yeah. is higher there. Well, duh, so that's it. That's a valid criticism. That's a, va a valid question. Not a criticism. It's a valid question to think, well, OK, consumer prices are rising. And the way that the uh, Census Bureau values inventory has some price components and price behavior involved in it. So maybe inventory is going nuts in this way for the first time in 30 years because the CPI consumer prices are behaving in a way they haven't in 40 years. So maybe it's just price changes and really we're not really recording the, uh, the flow of actual goods, just the prices of the goods that are coming into the US. But I mean, already we knew that wasn't the case with the GDP figures, which are adjusted for prices. But just to take things a step further to show you in the Census Bureau uh, retail and wholesale uh, inventory by month, you deflate them with using something like the CPI or the core CPI. It's not an exact precise number, obviously, but just to give us a sense of what may be going on in retail inventory, wholesale inventory in real terms, to get an idea of what the actual volumes might be in terms of uh, in this flood of inventory. And what you find is still biblical, unprecedented. Yes, and a very large increases on a short time frame, And then you compare it as we just saw in those graphs recent time periods where we had similar increases over one and a half times as much time, right? So this is absolutely something that is taking place. Yeah, in retail terms, it's just absolutely insane. And retailers are notoriously fickle about inventory. They don't want inventory. Really, mm -hmm. it's usually the wholesale level of the supply chain where acts as sort of the shock absorber to the system, where wholesalers will take on inventory if they have to, just to keep to maintain a smooth level of operation because, you know, the, the, it introduces a lot of frictions. If you have to call up suppliers and say produce less, it, you know, raises the cost per unit, any number of things that happen. But so usually wholesalers are 
a little bit less a uh, little bit less averse to holding inventory but in this case especially going back to last october it has been retailers that have been stuffed to the rafters with an, an enormous flood of goods and we know this too because warehouse space across the across the country is that warehouse vacancy rates are at i think 30 or 40 year lows too despite the lot of warehouses that have been built over the last decade and a half so warehouse space is that is becoming a, a problem as all this volume real volume of goods continues to flood into the US and i think maybe the takeaway here is there is no sign of it stopping yet you posted this article on the 27th of may and the article was titled inventory flood continues just as consumers tap out and i bring that date to our audience's attention because it was the same day that the Bureau of Economic Analysis released another important economic account. Even though we've been talking about inventory, this is the one that you say is most concerning. Despite the biblical increases in inventories, the most concerning number that particular day, that particular release was personal savings of Americans, which is just, whoo, wow, it's evaporating. Yeah, the personal savings rate down to, I think, 4.4%, which is the lowest it has been since early 2008. You don't yes. want to see a savings rate that low. And again, as we're talking about consumers tap out, we, you know, Target and Walmart already warned that consumer behavior is changing. Part of that has to do with consumers' discretionary budgets being robbed by paying high gasoline prices. And the other part of that, this demand destruction potential is consumers running out of income. They've spent more, maybe perhaps to a point where they're a little bit uncomfortable with how little savings they have left. And this is traditionally and typically what you see at the start of many recessions because consumers, once they reach their limits, quite naturally, quite prudently, they react and they start scaling back a little bit, except they do it at the worst possible time. They do it when inventory is biblical, which means that retailers and wholesalers and manufacturers are going to have to adjust to high levels of inventory and lower levels of consumer spending, which creates the very basic inventory cycle, which is at root of most of the business cycle. Uh, even in the modern day, even in the 21st century, there is still an inventory component to the business cycle. Okay, thank you, Jeff. That's a couple of episodes in a row now where the economic accounts are confirming what the monetary accounts were telling us several months ago that we are heading towards a very difficult economic time period ahead in the U.S. And, and the world. Yeah, the economy, like the markets, have had every chance to deviate over. I mean, since we've been talking about this since last year, and dollar number five goes back to last May, everything since then has progressed in the same direction, no deviation whatsoever. So as far as it goes, here we are on June 2nd of 2022, still moving in that same direction, still trying to figure out what that means but I think we're getting a better idea as time goes on. Thank you, Jeff. Take care, Emil.